the insects would have a meal. And Jesus was placed on the cross beside two thieves. It was the Roman death machine. But in trying to describe this morning of the, the, the physical pain and the torture, if you look at a cross through the eyes of the Romans, we only see the physical suffering. But if you look at the cross through the eyes of the Jews, then we get a correct picture, amen? amen? Because the Jews had an entirely different meaning when it comes to the cross. It means eternal separation from God. You were lost forever in their minds. It was a symbol of sun worship. You see, the, the cross goes all the way back to Nimrod. Nimrod was a sun worshiper. And long after he died, they said that his spirit went to the sun and his wife, Simaramis, was impregnated. She had an illicit affair. She called it the Immaculate Conception. She had a son being impregnated her, and the, the child's name was Tammuz. So the first letter of the, his name was T, and it represented sun worship. So the crosses, people wear crosses today, and we put crosses in churches, but I want you to know it's a symbol of sun worship. There's nothing pretty about the cross. It's a pagan symbol. So Christ found himself on a cross, a symbol of sun worship, but he conquered the sun god, amen? Yes. Christ conquered the sun god, and that will be the greatest show that he will ever sit upon. Oh, Christ is a mighty conqueror, what do you say? Amen. I want to know a friend of mine, the physical pain, the spirit of prophecy tells us that the physical pain was hardly felt. The physical pain was hardly felt compared to the mental anguish Amen. that Christ went through. And if it was only one individual upon the face of this earth, Christ was willing to die. Amen? Amen. So that means that we are important, we are special, we are unique, we are valuable in the sight of God. He loves us with everlasting love. So our scale up never forgot that. You and I are not to forget this friend of mine. So when trouble comes, there's a time to shine when you say amen. Yeah. I remember I faced a dilemma a couple of weeks ago when I, here am I eating healthy and vegetarian, changed my diet over 25 years ago, and still I'm not with problems in my heart. And the pain was so severe, I said, Lord, give me a little more time if you will. So, so when I found myself in the emergency, um, the, the nurses, uh, they gave me a pill. That's, they said it would calm me down before you, you go to surgery. And, uh, but it elevated the pain. I said, this is not working. <laughs> and they said, oh, then they, 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 they had a meeting by themselves, and they said, yeah, it's not working. So they said, we got to rush him to surgery right now. So I went in there Thursday night, and they operated on me on Friday morning. And I was saying to myself, Lord, but I'm doing your will. I'm faithful to you. I'm trying to be a vegetarian. But I discovered all you have to do is breathe and you can get sick. Amen? <laughs> it's not about what you have done. All sickness and problems and, and, and troubles come from the devil. Amen? But one of these days, you and I are going to have new bodies when you say amen. amen. New heart, new lungs, new kidneys. We are all going to be a brand new creatures in Christ. Amen? amen. So I don't care what the devil can do to this body, but he cannot destroy my faith in the living God. Amen? Yes. We have to be faithful. I said, I can give me this mountain. He was a tough dog, what he said. <coughs> a dog that will not go away. A dog that sticks at your side. The old Negro spiritual would say, trouble doesn't last always, but joy comes in the morning. Amen? Amen. This too will pass. So when you were not feeling well last week, Donovan, thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen? But Pilate did something very tremendous. Uh, he wrote an inscription on the, on the cross, on, on a on some material and he had it nailed on a cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. 
but he wrote it in three languages, in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Why three languages? And I've always asked myself the question. And the Jews said to him, take down that inscription. Don't say the king of the Jews. Say, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. <laughs> But that was of divine providence. Because what does it mean? And all scholars believe that it was written in these three languages. <coughs> Hebrew means the language of religion. Latin means the dialect of those who are the strongest born among women. The language of power. Greek, the language of culture. The golden tongue which gave a soul the object of sense and brought it to the abstractions of philosophy. In Greek it means those who are in the intellectual circles back then, academic committees, in the medical school, wherever men aspire to intellectual greatness. Christ must be king. And why says, if not, they are but polished instruments for the devil. You are simply an educated fool because true education is knowing who God is. Amen? Amen. And in Latin, those in power of other men, for example, those in the position in the White House, in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, Christ must be king in places of assembly, in the Supreme Court, in the bench, in the boardroom. Wherever men exercise power over other men, Christ must be king. Amen. So that's why it was written in three languages. And in Hebrew, the language of religion, the language of the patriarchs. And if Christ is not king here in the church, then we are sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Christ must be king here, amen? amen. If not here, where else? So in all circles of life, in Hebrew, in Latin, and Greek, which represent the whole world back then, Christ must be king. Not our own agenda, not our philosophy, or to see how bright we are, but Christ must be leader. Amen? Amen. I read after the Jesus had preached all day. The disciples had a meeting without the Master. Never have a meeting without the Master. Amen? Amen. Because Christ said to the disciples, give them something to eat. They came up with a decision. Because they had a meeting without the master, they said to Jesus, send them away. In our board meetings, in our places of assembly, in our business meeting, Christ must preside, amen? Because if Christ is not there, we always come with a wrong decision. Because the disciples did that. Christ wanted to test their faith. He can make bread out of nothing, amen? amen? And we need to give God all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Because at the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the, the religious leaders said, the praise is unlawful and it's much too low. Christ said, if they should hold their peace, then the very rocks, the inanimate stones, would cry out, amen? amen. We've got to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory, because he is God, and beside him there is no other. Whatever happens in life, friend of mine, never shy away from the truth. Always stand up for Jesus. Amen? Because he loves us, and we are special to him. I want you to know, friend of mine, one of these days it's going to be all right. Amen? Amen. One of these days, Jesus is coming again. And it won't be long, amen? amen. It's not going to be long. It's going to be sooner than you might think. One of these days, we're going to walk on the streets of gold. Won't that be good, amen? amen. We're going to have 2020 vision, amen? amen? No more eyeglasses, no more wrinkles in our faces, no more false or gray hair or arthritis or cancer. The big C, which everybody hates, is a death sentence. I thank God, one of these days it's going to be all right. Yeah. There's going to be no more mortgage, 
no more, no more hospitals, no more prisons, no more death. It's going to be our day, man. We're going to straighten up. We're going to be all right. Amen. Amen. None of us wants to get old, but we ought to say whatever challenge comes to us, Lord, give me, like Caleb, that mountain. And Christ said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Amen. Amen. Whatever happens, we are to face it. We are to set our faces like a flint. We are not to look to the right or to the left. Amen. We are not to compromise. Whatever threat comes to our way, we are to be faithful as the needle is to the pole. Amen. Do yes. you know what? Napoleon was in exile. He said to one of his generals that this Jesus is the most influential man who ever walked up on the, on the face of this earth. He said, Charlie Mann, Kaiser, Napoleon himself. Charlie Mann. And Maurice said, head of Hitler. He said, we have all tried to rule a world based on arms with force. But this Jesus has conquered the world based on love. He said, he said, soon our names will be forgotten, but the name of Jesus lives on. Amen? Yes. The name of Jesus, friend of mine, lives on. Because Paul said that one of these days every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. So either now or then. It better be now. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King of Kings. His name, as I said, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So in order to have peace in our lives, the Prince of Peace need to reside. Amen. Amen. The Middle East can never have peace because the Prince of Peace is not acknowledged there. Amen. There must be peace in our life only with Christ, the joy and the peace that heaven gives. The world cannot give it, and thank God the world cannot take it away. Amen. Amen. Let nobody steal your joy, friend of mine. Thank God for Jesus. I know what I'm talking about because I came from idol worship. I came from Hinduism. And in Hinduism, you have literally thousands of gods. But they're all dead. There is one who is alive. There's only one who has conquered death. And he said, I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. And because I live, you can live also, amen. So I wanted to serve the living God. The one who had conquered death. If he knew the secret, that's the God I want to serve. Amen? Amen. And thank God for Jesus. Amen. He's alive. And one of these days, he's not coming back as a babe in Bethlehem or Judea. He's not coming back to receive spice in his hands or feet. Or a crown of thorns on his brow. When Christ lifted that crown on his brow, he lifted a curse from the Genesis 3.18. Thorns and thistles also shall they bring forth. So Christ took upon the curse of the earth on himself. Yes. And on that great getting up morning, the devil tried to hold him. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. He just got up and he walked out. Amen. Man. And he, when he walked out, he looked over his shoulder and he insulted both hell and the grave. He said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And because he lived from the time, you and I can live also, amen. amen. It won't be long, amen. amen. Jesus is coming again. What they are rejoicing is going to be, amen. amen. I want to be that now when the saints go marching in, amen. amen. Some said they want to be the 144,000. Well, that's a hard number for me. But I kept on reading and I saw that there is a great multitude amen. which no man could know, amen. I can make that number, amen. amen. There is a great multitude, friend of mine, which no man can number. It's going to be like one of these days. There's plenty good room in my father's house, amen? amen. There are mansions, and a mansion is bigger than a house. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a house is amen. bigger than a mansion. Because Jesus said, my father's house has many. has many mansions in it, amen? 375 miles wide and broad and long and high. And God is the architect. Some individuals did the calculation and said, that the mansion of, that, that Jesus was going to prepare every individual who was born from Adam until the end of time will be able to find a place in that kingdom. Yes. Because God is the architect. He's a master builder. Amen? Amen. And one of these days, Jesus is coming again. It's going to be rough, friend of mine. 
Some of us are going to go through the time of trouble. But we ought to say like Caleb, the tough dog, give me that mountain, amen. Whatever the devil throws at us, we ought to stand up and be counted, amen. The devil might destroy this body. He might put, uh, he cannot alter God's original plan, amen. He might stall it for a little bit. But health is not prepared for you and I. Amen. It's prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. I'm going to walk on the streets of gold and stand on the sea of glass. We're going to sit around the welcome table. We're going to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Amen. See, when I cross the Red Sea, the sign of the first stanza. When we, when we get up our yonder, we're going to sing the second stanza. Amen. The hymn writer says, angels will fold their wings. They cannot, they cannot tell redemption story. Amen. They don't know what it's like to be redeemed. Redeemed means to be redeemed means to buy back to purchase that which was gotten by fraud and deception. And if you didn't know, the devil got beat in heaven, and when Christ came down on his stuff, because Christ said he's the prince of this world, he got beat again, amen. So Jesus is the winner man, amen. And the devil is the loser man, amen. So we ought to be on the winning side. Yes. Amen. There might be someone here this morning. You want to be faithful to God, regardless of what happened. You want God to give you the strength to keep holding on to Him, friend of mine. This is not an answer story, friend of mine. This is real. And our God is alive. If this is your decision as we sing this closing hymn, please, I invite you to stand with me. On a hill for us.
We ask, O oh Lord, that you will rekindle that fire for, from those of us who is dimming. Strengthen our faith in you, Lord. And we, as we look forward for another day, the future, we don't know what it holds, but we know that nothing catches you by surprise. You hold the walls in the palm of your hands. And we belong to you. So give us the strength, Lord, to be faithful unto you, regardless of what happens. So one of these days, it's going to be all right. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness, your grace, your mercy, for your keeping power. Forgive our backsliding, our murmurings, and our complainings. And by your grace and your mercy, may we encourage each other, hold up each other's hands. Because we're going to make it there together. None of us are going in into the pulling gates before each other. All of us are getting there together. Keep us safe and we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, let everybody sing. Amen.